Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's uh, receive our evening offering. Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for your word. We come before it expectantly with open hearts. Thank you. Father, reveal to each one of us tonight what our part of this offering is. This is a praise offering tonight. We bring our offering before you in praise and worship. And we thank you for all of the wonderful, marvelous things that you've done Thursday night and all day Friday and then all day today. Glory to God. Wonderful things, marvelous things. People have accepted you as Savior. People have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. People have been healed. Restoration has come. And we thank you and praise you and bless you for it. And tonight's offering, Father, is an offering of worship. Yes, sir, I'll do that. I, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, the Lord changed my direction a little bit, but you know, I just work here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when the boss says go this direction, I mean, that's, you know, we hook up and go that direction. Amen. Open your Bibles to the book of Galatians, please. And those of you that are familiar with the Believer's Voice of Victor broadcast, you know that the Lord told uh, Gloria and me years ago, many years ago now, and uh, <clears throat> that to make, fr- let, let, me, let, me, let me back up here just a moment because there are those of you that, uh, that may be new to our ministry and so forth. Since 1968, when the Lord revealed to us, we were preaching in our hometown in Fort Worth. And um, I, was, I, I was just getting ready for the service that night. And, and I'm walking around, we're staying there in my, in my, mom, in my mother and dad's home and, and preaching in, in, uh, in our, our, our home church. Our, our pastor in those days was Brother Harold Nichols and Grace Temple Church. And, and so he had invited me to come for a meeting and, I, and I'm just walking around uh, in the back room there and uh, just praying in the spirit and, and I had my Bible in my hand. And my eyes fell down on Romans 13, 8. Oh, no man, anything but to love him. I thought, what? Uh, I'll get the Amplified on this. And it said, stay out of debt. <laughs> that didn't help me any. <laughs> so I thought, how do you do that? And so I hollered at Gloria. I said, Gloria, come here and look at this. She read that and her face fell just like mine. Because, you know, I, I didn't know you could do anything without debt. I mean, I, that was just our way of life. And, and, and of course, like, like Gloria said, she married me in my notes. <laughs> and um, so I said, well, Gloria, look at this. And she said, huh. Well, she put her finger on that verse. She said, if that's what the book says, that's what we're going to do. Amen. Amen. Well, see, the thing of it was, I didn't know I didn't know anything about how the kingdom of God functioned financially. I didn't know anything about that. And so I had to learn how that system worked. I'd been trained in the Babylonian system. And the reason we call that the Babylonian system 
is because at the Tower of Babel, we know what Adam did with the blessing of the Lord. And then came Noah and his sons. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said, said exactly the same thing to them that he said to Adam. Exactly the same blessing. Ham and Japheth, Noah's two sons, did the same thing with it that Adam did with it. Now, Shem didn't, he stayed with it. But then he stayed with the blessing of the Lord. Now, at the Tower of Babel, there began, there began a system of man attempting to meet his own needs without God. Now, Adam was the first one to do it, but he's, he's off the scene. And then beginning with Nimrod and coming on up, I want to take time to go through all that, but that, that system that was born there at Babel, where they said, we don't need God. And God said, whatever they have conceived in their heart, they can do. So he had to stop it. Now, I want you, I want you, I want you to get this, this. I wish we had time to dig into this tonight more, but, but we don't. God said, Babel. The word Babel means confusion. Now, that word spoken, do, do you understand the dominating power of the word of God? Think about this. The prophet Micah said, a child will be born in Bethlehem. Seven hundred and fifteen years later, the word of God dominated nations dominated people, moved things around so that Jesus was born in Bethlehem right on time. Isn't that awesome? I mean, just, just think about it. the dominating power of the word and it hadn't gotten any less. And you and I have been given the honor and privilege to speak it. Whoa. And if, and if we'll walk in it by faith, it's just as dominating in our lives to the things we speak to as it is when God speaks to it. Amen. At any rate, I wanted you to see that so that in the spirit realm, there is a cap and every natural nation rises up big, powerful, nobody like us until it hits that cap. And without God, mister, you ain't going any higher. Because man is never, ever going to meet his own needs. He's not qualified and it hits that cap and collapses. Now in times past, things have lasted hundreds of years, some even a millennial, but it hit the cap and down she come. Now in recent times, 
as the time grows closer and closer and closer? What happened? What happened to communism? What happened to Russia? Hit the cap. Down it came. See, none of them can last. Well, now the United States, there's an exception there. Well, not an exception, but there, there is, uh, there's a set of circumstances here that are different. There's a set of circumstances in Israel that are different because Israel will never fall again. Amen. But see, we're pushing time. We're, we're, I mean, it's just about quitting time here. Praise God. I mean, to tell you, you know, it's two minutes to five. <laughs> it's about time to quit. But now the United States is the only nation in history that was ever formed by a people that loved God for the purpose of worshiping him. Yeah. Only one ever. Now, God created the nation of Israel because he loved them. But this nation was created because of people that love God. And, and he'll never forget it. There, there's, there, there's covenant between this nation and God. But the Babylonian system, in this case, has, it's been called progressive socialism that began attacking this country 115 years ago. And you go back and check, check out the history and all that. It's hit the camp. Now, people call it judgment, and rightly so. But now you see, judgment's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Because if it wasn't for judgment, you'd just keep on going until it just destroyed you. Amen. Amen. The judgment that we're experiencing. The United States is not under judgment. That Babylonian system that's been attacking it is under judgment. This is not the end of the United States. It's the end of that system. And it's come to a close. Now, <laughs> um, thank you, Lord. Huh. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Say that to me again, Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you look back, nineteen thirteen. great outpouring of the Spirit of God. My, the great Stone Street revival in Chicago. My, my, the Chicago World's Fair. I'm telling you, Chicago was, was headquarters for the miraculous during that time. No wonder the devil attacked it like he did. So on the other hand, you see, the, you see the devil moving, trying to destroy things in 1913 was when they passed the Federal Reserve Act, which should never have happened in the United States. And they'd, had, they'd tried to do it and tried to do it and tried to do it, and Congress would just kill it every time it'd come up because it's, it, it just cuts the throat of a... Uh, of a free economy because you put, put all the currency into other people's hands. Anyway, we won't go into that. But I want you to notice this. It was done secretly. President Woodrow Wilson called a special meeting of Congress on Christmas Eve, which ain't nobody going to show up on Christmas Eve. They ain't even paying attention to it. But they had certain ones picked enough to make a forum that showed up and voted in the Federal Reserve Act. One of the first steps towards Babylon. Amen. Now, 
Just, just follow what happens here. When that, that cap, now we, we know what happened at, at Babel. In fact, the word Babel means confusion, like I said. And, and pe- you know, people have the idea that all of a sudden two people standing there talking to one another and suddenly one of them speaking French and the other one speaking Mongolian or something. No, 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 no. That wouldn't have confused anything because you give them a year, they learn the language. They were speaking the same language at the time, but there was so much confusion among them, they couldn't understand what they were doing enough to build anything. Do you understand that you could all be speaking the same language and all of a sudden is something starts happening to your mind and, and you're getting confused and everybody's got a different idea how we're supposed to build this tower and, and we're supposed to, no, 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 let's build, no, no, no. And a fight breaks out because we can't get along with one another. Mm-hmm. That's what happened on that day. Now, as they dispersed, other languages began to develop out of that. But the confusion that took place confused everybody to the point that tower could not be finished. It collapsed. Now that's what happens now. And if you and I are living in a time that is so uh, accelerated and so exciting, we are seeing more than one or two or three or four governments around the world hit the, hit the wall at the same time. They can't figure out how to do anything. One's built on the rock, another's built on the sand. That, that, that's the... the, the That's the parable that Jesus used to explain this. And the same storm hit the same people. The same storm hit both houses at the same time. One of them stood, the other one didn't. And that's, that's what he's referring to. Now we're in that time right now. Glory to God. And we're seeing it, we're seeing it function and it is a function of seed time and harvest. Now, here's what the Lord reminded me of a moment ago when I asked him to show me that again. Now, now, now listen to this. The judgment that we, in this time frame, all, and will continue like this up until the time of the judgment. God is not just judging somebody, no. It is a function of seed time and harvest. You keep sowing what you've been sowing and you're going to reap the harvest. And if you're sowing to your flesh, it's coming down. If you're sowing to the Spirit and judging yourself, like the Scripture says, Judge yourself that you not be judged. Not condemn yourself, judge yourself. Hey, Father, I judge myself of that in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And and I repent of it. Judgment doesn't come on you. You judge yourself. But you just keep sowing the same thing, the same thing, the same thing, thinking every year you're going to get different results. You can't do that. That is the definition of insanity. That you keep doing the same thing over, 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 expecting any minute to get different results. It's just not coming. You just keep saying the same thing, the same thing. You keep planting, (laughs) you you keep planting peanuts thinking I'm going to get a cotton crop someday. (laughs) No, only a fool would do that. Well, see, the same thing is true in the spirit. Have you found the book of Galatians? Yes. I talked long enough where, you know. Where, <laughs> no. <laughs> now, you have, you, you have noticed um, that we, in, in, in all of our 
on the Believer's Voice of Victor broadcast for many years. Uh, every Friday is offering day. And um, the Lord said many years ago, He said, now, see, we, back to where I, I first got into this, by not borrowing money, you're not tied to that Babylonian system because the borrower is servant of the lender. Amen. And that, and borrowing from the world is under the curse. It's listed in the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, under the curse. So the Lord said to us there, stay out of that system. Well, like I said, we, we didn't know the first thing about it. But then as we began to learn, as we began to walk in it, made a lot of mistakes, goofed up here and then God forgave us and, and picked our dumb selves up, you know, and, and, and helped us. And we just kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Out of debt, unconnected to that system. That's what's so big about staying free from debt. Now, Jesus preached the acceptable year of the Lord. That's the great Jubilee. That was the time of supernatural debt cancellation. Very important to God to cancel debts. Well, you don't get, well, you don't just get strung out there and you, and you owe the world and, and that system and you're tied to it. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. I asked God this question. I said, Lord, what? I, 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 now, I mean, you know, we're in favor of doctors. We're in favor of medical science. I mean, doctors, particularly strong Christian doctors, are fighting the same demon sickness we are. Amen. Amen. And I said, I, I understand that, but what's the difference between going to a doctor and going to a banker? I couldn't, I couldn't find the difference in them. Do you know? To go to the doctor, you don't have to enter covenant. <laughs> go to a banker, you have to bow your knee. That's huge. Well, what am I going to do, Brother Copeland? I'm already in debt. Well, smile, sweetheart. Glory to God. There's a way out of this. <laughs> And God will supernaturally deliver you. Yes. Uh, a, a, a partner of ours, so a year, years back, he was, he was a farmer, farmed a big lot of land and uh, had lots of cotton, a lot big, out there in West Texas, just just big farm. And this is, you know, it wasn't like the old tractors we used to have there. A lot of them old man killers, boy, I'll tell you, I didn't want to, I, I didn't. I like to drive them, but I sure didn't like to work them. Well, I didn't like to work, but that, anyway. <laughs> well, the one thing about it, I wasn't afraid of work. I could lay right down beside it and go sound asleep. But anyway, uh, that's what my grandpa said. And he was right. So, <laughs> but he's out there that he got that air conditioned cab and he, back in those days, we was tapes, you know. And he's got those tapes going and I'm preaching on, uh, you know, on, on debt freedom and, and, and so on. <laughs> he got excited, man. And you know, when a, when a farmer turns around and starts coming to the house in the middle of the day, he's either had an attack of appendicitis or he's seen an angel or something. <laughs> I mean, you don't come home in the middle of the day. Man, he come running up to the house and his wife said, what's the matter? He said, nothing. Glory to God. He said, we're out of debt on everything but this farm. And I'll tell you what, my faith is alive and we're going to get out of debt on this farm. Amen. And they sat down and they prayed. He said, call that, call that um, loan company 
and find out what the payoff is on our farm. We're believing God. And, you know, and uh, went on back to the field. So she gets all of her papers up and everything and, and calls uh, the people that held the loan on that place and told them that, said, we've decided that uh, we're going to work towards paying off our farm. Would you give us the final payoff, please? They said, sure, we'll, we'll, we'll check it and we'll call you back. Well, she didn't hear anything. A couple of weeks went by, she didn't hear anything. So she called them again. And, and, and they said, well, we, we, hang on just a minute. So they got the loan officer on the phone. And this is not just any loan officer. This is one of the executives of the bank. And he said, um, we haven't been able to find record of your loan. She said, really? <laughs> and it, you know, I mean, he knew good and well they had, they knows these people. They're local farmers. But, and he's kind of sheepishly saying, we, uh, we can't find any record of your loan. She said, then that means I don't owe you anything. He said, I guess it does. <laughs> she said, would you write me a letter to that effect? And he did. He had to. So the blood of Jesus not only eradicates sin, It'll wipe, the, it'll wipe the ink off of your note, brother. <laughs> yeah, glory to God. That's supernatural debt cancellation. And, and our testimony files are full of stuff like that, where, where things like that have happened. But it doesn't happen to you, to you zero in on that thing and you begin to read where Jesus said that he's in, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he's anointed me to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And you go read those scriptures over there in, in, in the Torah and you find out how God would blow the horn of freedom and everybody went free, praise God. And I don't care if you'd lost your home place because you got sold into bondage for notes you couldn't pay and all of that. I want you to know, praise God, you go back home. The property was yours again. Amen. See, God didn't want his people tied to debt. Let me tell you this. God Almighty, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your Lord and your Savior does not want you he does not want you obligated to anybody but him. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. I remember, oh, the last debt I had. Man, I, I was so blessed and the, the, my dad's, <laughs> my, my, the, the bank where my, where my dad did business. And this is back when they had the state banks and they were local banks and everybody knew everybody, you know. And um, so, I mean, the president of that bank, man, my dad were good friends and, and my dad was, you know, such a man of his word, dear Lord. I, I mean, he... <laughs> so I wasn't. <laughs> All I wanted to be. <laughs> Things just wasn't working out right. But anyway, <laughs> I had this, I had this two thousand dollar note. And I'd pay on it, I'd pay on it something, something had happened. And, and it just went on and on and on. That was one of the, one of the notes that Gloria married. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Amen. 
Well, and, and of course he was, he, he was a friend of my dad's. And he, so, but here we are at Oral Roberts University and, um, and we've stepped out now from the university. We've gone into, into this ministry full time. And I called Mr. McCandless and I said, sir, um, I want you to know uh, the Lord Jesus Christ has made a great change in my life. And I said, Glory and I are believing God. And I want you to know I will pay that note and I will pay it just as fast as I can get my hands on the money. He laughed. He said, <laughs> get him. He said, somebody came in here last week and paid that note. I said, what? <laughs> and I said, who? He said, I've been sworn to secrecy. They just told me to tell you that Jesus told them to do it. Amen. Amen. Now see, and, and, and you and I say things, well, I just don't see how this could take place. That's cause you and I can't see very far. But you have to remember that God is always, always on the other side of this thing. When he told Israel, do you remember when Joshua took over command after Moses and he sent out two spies? Now, before he was part of, he was two of 12 and 10 of them, you know, messed up. So, so he only sent out two. He made sure he had two faith guys before he ever sent them out. Well, do you, do, do you remember what Rahab the harlot said to the two men? She hid them out and she said, where have you been? We have been expecting you since we first heard about your God splitting the Red Sea. She said, our hearts melted in us. See, God never intended for them to have to go over there and, and fight that bunch. He intended for them just to go over there and claim it. But they, give the, they gave the devil 40 years to build up his forces over there. If they'd have just gone on in there, they'd have took it without firing a shot. They'd have fallen at their feet because their hearts had melted in them. And they said, oh, that, that, we don't want that bunch coming in here on us. So see, he's, he's always doing his thing on the other side. But he's not going to tell you that because you're going to have to walk by faith and not by sight. Now, after you say, sir, yes, sir, I'm going. Then he'll begin to reveal to you things that he's doing. So don't ever forget that. I went into, I mean, oh Lord, when Gloria and I first left Fort Worth going to Tulsa, I weighed 240 pounds. And, uh, and so man, the day I left Fort Worth, I ate nine boiled eggs that day, man, because the Lord said, you're you going to get that fat off of you, boy. And so, and back then, that's the only thing I knew to do. And so, I, and I'm steadily going down, going down, going down. Finally got down to 200 and then, then started down under 200. I only had one suit. <laughs> and it fit me at 240. <laughs> and man, this is the man that was altering that suit. Oh, brother. And I'm, you know, I, I, I really did look funny, man. And, and I, 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 I kept taking my suit back over there and he kept alternate. And, and he said, uh, he said, uh, Mr. Kenner, I can't alter that suit no more, man. <laughs> he said, I can't take that suit down no more. <laughs> I said, why? He said, what? I think... If, if I take them pants off anymore, <laughs> you're going to have one big pocket right in the back. 
and I did. <laughs> but when it's all you got, brother, that's all you got, all right? <laughs> and so I, I got my suit and went preaching, praise God. <laughs> well, we were in Fort Worth and um, there was a man there again. And it, in fact, it was on, um, not the trip that I was talking about, find out about that, but it was the next. No, it was on that trip. Anyway. The, the man that, good friend of my dad's, and, and, um, and he bought his clothes there, and I, and I knew him, Jewish man, and wonderful man. I mean, I, I really enjoyed him over the years. And, and uh, I knew him as, a, as just a young boy. And, and so I went over there, and I said, Mr. Howard, it's time for a new suit. Glory to God. I had the money, brother. God had blessed me. Now, back in those days, $160 for a new suit. Son, I'm going to tell you what. That's $1,500, $1,800 suit now. Mm. But, whew, the Lord had blessed me. Thank you. Amen. I don't have to wear that thing with them big pockets on the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I went in there and I knew right where that suit was, brother. I can just see it today. Of course it was blue. And uh, so I, I, I went over there, I put the suit on and, and of course he marked it up for me, you know. And I went back in the dressing room and, and you know, put my jeans back on and went back out. And I walked up over there and oh man, I was so excited to get to do this. I got the cash, brother. And I just laid that cash down there on the, on the counter and he pushed it back at me. He said, Kenneth, while you were in the dressing room, a man came in here and paid for your suit. I said, who? He said, he swore me to secrecy. <laughs> And said, I was to, now this is, this is Jewish man, you know. And he said, I was to tell you that Jesus bought it for you. Amen. And he said, I believe it. Amen. <laughs> See, he's already working on the other side. Amen. Don't ever, ever, ever forget that. Particularly in the realm of finances. Always he's working on the other side. When it came time to go across the Jordan, he already had his angels over there. Yeah. He already had that place staked out, scared the stuffing out of everybody over there mm -hmm. where they're just sitting there waiting to surrender because they heard what happened to Pharaoh, mm -hmm. drowned that whole army. Amen. Boy, they didn't want none of that. <laughs> That's the reason the devil will do his best to try to get your attention on this side. Mm -hmm. Amen. So there's another thing about finances, very, very unique. It's different from healing. It's different from any and using your faith for any other part of your redemption. You cannot buy by yourself. You can't sell by yourself. You can't give by yourself and you can't receive by yourself. Someone else is involved in every financial transaction. And you may be doing, you may be praying with somebody and they got a big smile on their face and they don't bleed nothing you're saying. Or, you know, they're, they're, you're, you're doing business with somebody and they're really nice to you while you're there and you leave and they hope you crash and burn. So you're always dealing in the natural realm when it comes to finances. But that's the reason it is so important to keep your faith in line and walk in love. All the time. Amen? Amen. Walk in love all the time. 
Faith works by love. And grace works by faith. No love, no faith, no faith, no grace, no grace. Forget it. Because that's where all the blessings are. That's what makes the blessing of the Lord work is the grace of God. Hallelujah. God's grace is his overwhelming desire to treat you and me as if sin had never happened. Next time you see the commercial where they got the green trucks and green people, green uniforms, and they come in after a flood or after a storm, you know, and they run in there with all their green equipment and they clean everything up and they drive away like it never even happened. I saw that and I said, that's what grace is. Like it never even happened. Jesus came in and cleaned it up. Oh, the ho, ho, ho. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Surely you found Galatians 6 by now. I, <laughs> Verse 6. We have never, ever in 49 years and eight months of ministry, we have never raised money. Now, I'm not, don't misunderstand me. I, I'm not putting down other ministries. That, that's not what they do is none of my business. I'm doing what the Lord instructed me to do. He said, I'm holding you responsible for the laws that govern abundance. That means I, I'm, I'm going to have to walk in it. I, 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 I can't sidestep and, and, and continue to walk in revelation concerning the, the economy of heaven and the kingdom of God if I'm not going to walk in it. I, I, I can't do that. So now, however, the, but I, I would suggest you don't try to pay for your church with, with bake sales. And There's been a lot of chickens <laughs> gave their lives for our little rinky-dink churches. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> Oh, no, we, got, we can do better than that. <laughs> but think about it. I had the Lord say this to me. He said, I have churches that owe money to the mafia and they don't even know it. Because they didn't, they didn't know they borrowed it from a, a, a bank or a source where mob money was behind it. So you enter into a covenant to get somebody's money to do what you want to do, then what they have in their life just got a door into your life. And there's a lot of those folks, there's a lot of bankers, you don't, you don't, want, you don't want them in your life. Right. Particularly in these days. Anyway, here we go. Let him that is taught in the word, have you been taught in the word this week? communicate or respond unto him that teaches in all good things. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Now remember, here in the fifth chapter of the book of Galatians, we find the fruit of the Spirit. We find the fruit of the flesh listed here in the fifth chapter of the book of Galatians, verse 16. I say then, walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. Now you'll notice the, the English translators put a, a, a large S there. Do you realize that in the Greek there are no punctuation marks and, there, and there's no capital letters? So it was just at the privilege of the translator. The more you study this, the more you realize 
He's not talking about the Holy Spirit. He's talking about you're in my reborn spirit because your flesh is not fighting the Holy Spirit. Your flesh is fighting you and your spirit is standing up against your flesh. And we can refer to the book of Romans, which also the apostle Paul wrote by the Holy Spirit. And, and you put, these, put those books side by side and you can see that's exactly what he's talking about. So now notice this. He said, the flesh puts pressure against the, your spirit and your spirit against the flesh. For these are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which of these? Here's manifestation of sowing to the flesh. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, or faithfulness, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ, they that are in Christ, have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, in, uh, envying one another. Now come back down again. Let him that's taught in the word, respond unto him that teaches in all good things. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. He's talking about what he just listed there. Where whatever you sow is, if you're sowing on the flesh side, you're going to reap the flesh. Curse is what you're going to reap. Sowing on the spirit side, you reap the reap or you're developing the fruit of the Spirit. Against these, there is no law. Hallelujah. So the devil has no defense against you when you're walking in the Spirit. Now, notice this very, very carefully now. He that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Life everlasting. That word in Greek is zoe, translated everlasting life, translated, in this case, life everlasting. It is the life of God. The life of God is in your born again spirit. Yes. Amen. Amen. His life is in there. That Zoe life is inside you. Now, here's one thing we know. The sower sows the word. We've sowed a lot of word in here since Thursday night. I can guarantee you, because Jesus said it, Satan's coming. Some of you, he's already, he's already done his best to start trying to talk you out of it. Amen. Amen. Don't let him steal it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus said, these are they by the wayside who have no root in themselves. Now we're supposed to be rooted and grounded in love. Have no root in themselves. And when persecution and affliction arise, listen, for the words sake. That persecution didn't rise to teach you something. 
You may have got sense enough to learn something out of it, but that's not the reason it came. God didn't do it. The devil did it trying to steal the word off of you. He's trying to kill you. He comes, now listen, he doesn't come to kill, steal, and destroy. No, Jesus said he came to steal, kill, and destroy. Before he can kill you, before he can destroy you, he's got to steal the word. The word is his enemy. It is, he, he has no defense against it. So he's got to talk you out of it some way or another. Don't let him have it. Amen. Father, I pray that every person in the sound of my voice recalls these words in the days and hours to come when Satan comes to try to steal the word, that they just stomp their foot and say, no, bless God, Satan, you ain't taking the word out of me. I'm healed just like I, like I believed I received. Saturday morning at 11.45. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sixth day of August, 2015 in Anaheim. Oh, you know what, in Anaheim? Chicago. Oh, we're in Anchorage. <laughs> That's good. Praise God. Now, reap life. And this is what the offering is tonight. It is a praise offering for what we've heard, for what has been ministered, how the Spirit of God has dealt with all of us and, and, and we've seen many wonderful things and, and revelation. I mean, I, I, you know, I get the advantage of standing up here and, and I can see your face when you get that, huh, <laughs> yeah, you know. It's that place where you say, glory to God, did you see that? And, and, and somebody says, I didn't see none. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> Amen. You see something in the Spirit. That's revealed knowledge, revelation knowledge, not, not especially knowledge of the book of Revelation, but revealed knowledge is knowledge revealed directly from the Holy Spirit to your spirit, bypasses your mind and so forth. And you see it. I mean, you just see it. Amen. Hallelujah. I've already preached me plumb happy. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. And we praise you and we believe the word that you have spoken. That these words, as we sow according to these scripture verses here, as we sow and as the people sow in praise for the word that they've heard and then they sow to the Spirit, and in doing so, they receive and take hold of the Word as their own revelation, not just something they heard from me or from Gloria. And we give you praise for it, and we thank you for it, and we worship you, and we bless you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. If you need an envelope for your giving, raise your hand. Now, twice in this meeting, I have said, ushers, pass out the offering. <laughs> pass out the envelope. <laughs> Kelly reminded me that one time some years ago, I'd forgotten about it, in Anaheim. We received the offering and the Lord said, count it and divide it up equally among the whole congregation and give it back. I said, why? <laughs> he said, because it's a good seed, dummy. <laughs> oh, he didn't call me dummy. I called me dummy because I didn't catch on anywhere from that. And that's what we did. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the best seeds I've ever sowed. Praise God. 
Can you, can I just share one more thing with you about finances? Don't ever let anybody steal something from you. We went into the airport. This is back before we had an airplane that would go overseas. And, and so um, we're in the, in the boarding area. And uh, this is years and years ago. And the ministry, we, we, the, uh, the, Gloria was the photographer back then. I mean, Gloria was the photographer. She sold books at the table. I did the preaching. And, and I tell you what, it, even <laughs> there, there were times that I, I would go back behind the platform and put on my overalls and people didn't recognize me with my overalls on. And I'd come out there and start breaking down the sound system. <laughs> oh, Lord God. Amen. Well, I mean, we was out there, you know. And so I had that camera. There's a little Canon camera, nice camera. I had it on my shoulder. Well, I got up to go get on the airplane. My camera's gone. I said, Gloria, you got the camera? No, she said, you got the camera. I said, I don't have it. Uh. <laughs> Kenneth B.C. began to rise up on the inside of me. I'm going to find that guy and spank him and get my camera. The Lord said, you better watch what you're doing. He said, give him the camera right now. And if they bring him back over there and say, is this is your camera? You, you tell them, no, 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 no. I gave that to him. That's his. Amen. I'm sowing it. I'm not going to let somebody steal off of me. I'm going to sow it faster than they can steal it. And I said, Lord, we're believing you for an, an icon F and I want to thank you for it in the name of Jesus. That's my seed from an icon. Well, we went, we went to, uh, San Francisco, where we were preaching out there for full gospel business men for a week. And so, man, I'd been in that hotel. I hadn't gotten out of it in several days. We'd been just one service right after another. I said, come on, Gloria, we're going to get out of here and at least walk around the block. We're just walking along. There's just some little, some, some little storefront, um, you know, little, little small two showcase windows and door in the middle, just row after row of them. And we're walking along there and right out of the corner of my, it's almost like that $20 bill in Oklahoma <laughs> City. I saw it out of the corner of my eye. And I went back over there and I looked down in the corner of the case there was a Nikon F camera. Now, how many of you know what a Nikon F is? All right. Now, now listen to me now. So I went in there I said, I'd like to know how much that, that uh, Nikon you have in the, in the display case. She said, a Nikon? A little Japanese girl. And I said, yeah, it's over there in the display case. She went over there and looked and got it out. And I could tell she never saw that before. And she said, just a minute, let me go ask my dad. So... <laughs> He came back out there and he doesn't, he doesn't speak any English. And I said, how much you want for this Nikon L? Oh, sound. And I, so I turned around to her and, and she says, make him an offer. He don't know it's in there either. I had $250 worth of traveler's checks in my pocket. $250, even back there then, wouldn't buy that box. Because oh, wow. back there then, that was about, the, just the camera body was around $750, $800, something like that. <laughs> and, uh, and so I said, well, um, how, about, uh, how about $200? Hi. I wrote it just fast as I could write it. <laughs> So we were believing God. I said, what about the lens? Come with camera. <laughs> I said, okay, that's good. <laughs> well, I'm believing God for a hundred millimeter lens. 
we get to Hawaii, and I'm excited over this because I, 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 I know my seed is working, brother. Amen. <laughs> we get to Hawaii, and we're just out walking around, and we walk past the camera store. And uh, so, <laughs> and a big camera store there in Kahlua. So we walked past there, and I said, Glory, let's go in there and see if they got a 100 millimeter uh, Nikon lens. We walked in there. And I, and I saw one up on the, the top shelf there. Y'all can sing in a minute, okay. And uh, <laughs> I saw it up there. I said, what, isn't that, a, isn't that a 100 millimeter Nikon lens case up there? He said, uh, yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? He said, I, 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 don't, I don't know where it came from, but he said, I guess somebody maybe left it here on consignment or something. He said, I've, I, I've never seen that. I said, could you get it down? Well, he had to go get a stick, you know, and get up there like that and clamp that thing and pick it up, hand it down, and sure enough, pristine condition, man. Brand new. I said, what do you want for it? He said, I ain't got any idea. He said, let me go ask the boss. He goes and asks the boss. He came back. He came back. That's came Texas back. talk. Isn't it? <laughs> he came back and he said, uh, how about a hundred bucks? I said, uh, stand real still. <laughs> <laughs> I rest my case. Don't ever let anybody steal from you. Sow it. It's worth more as a seed than it is for us as a sale because it's worth a hundred times when you sow it. Hallelujah. 